Full disclosure on today's topic. It took me a long time to get here. It took me a long time to embrace this topic. It took me a long time to believe that this topic is even possible. It took me even longer to embrace it and believe that it was possible for me. So today's topic is about, above all, love who you are. And you know, it's really interesting how we might tell people, yes, I love me, I love who I am, especially if um, we're teaching others, right? We're a mom, we have children, we tell them, yes, love is important, I love you, I love you. But to really step back and look at this topic and really ask yourself, do I love me above all, above everything? That means no judgment, no looking in the mirror, no saying, okay, I would like you a little bit more if you know you could be a little less of this and a little more of that, um, because that's not unconditional love. But yet, what we do to others when we want unconditional love from, from them is say, you know, if you really loved me, you'd take my side. If you really love me, you'd see how important this is to me. If you really love me, X, Y, Z, fill in the blank. So what we're doing is we're actually putting the ownership of how we love ourselves and how we base our value on what another person sees, thinks, feels, or believes. And when we do that, we're always going to be disappointed because think about it, everyone that we're depending on is having their own ups and downs that day, right? So if you're catching someone at a time when they're having a down moment or low energy moments or a lack, low lack of self in themselves, you know, and then you're expecting them to be all that for you, to do everything that you need them to do, you're going to be sorely disappointed. And then when you're disappointed, you bring it back and you say to yourself, oh my gosh, yeah, I guess I'm not lovable. Um, I don't even see the need to go on. Um, this is so frustrating. Life is so hard. And then as soon as you start having that conversation with your, with you, you start going down that negative rabbit hole of low levels of self, low self-esteem, low self-image, low self-confidence, low self-worth, and low self-love. I mean, hello. So when we talk about, above all, love yourself, love who you are, regardless of whatever unconditional love this is you loving you. What do you love about yourself? Are you able to look in the mirror and say, oh my gosh, I love you so much. You know, even when I do that, I get like this feeling in my solar plexus chakra that I, I'm like, yeah, it feels really good. Because if we cannot give something away that we don't possess. So if we have no love of self or very low levels of love of self, how are we supposed to give it away? How are we supposed to be there for others when we can't be there for ourselves? Now, I talked about um, self-pity because self-pity is the opposite of self-esteem. And self-esteem is one of the levels of self that I'm always talking about. So when we're in that self-pity mode, that comes from a victim mindset. And a victim mindset doesn't necessarily mean that something really horrible, awful had to happen to you, but a victim mindset is something where you're feeling not good enough. You're feeling like something that happened in your past is defining who you are today and you're never going to climb out of it and whatever you're doing to try to make your life different, you just can't do it, especially because the people that you know, love and trust, the people that you're hanging around with the most are always reminding you of who you used to be or what you used to, um, the choices you used to make. And when you are steeped in that, when you're constantly being reminded of that, remember, your feelings are driving the bus of your life. So those past experiences have feelings and emotions attached to them. And they have, you have created a belief around those feelings and emotions. So you've brought those feelings, those emotions, those beliefs with you from 
childhood and when you experience that traumatic or um, very negative experience into your adult life, you don't even realize that that's your love language. That's how you are loving yourself or not loving yourself. Now, when you practice self-love, what does that look like for you? What can you do to express love for you more often? And one of the ways is remembering contrast. I talk a lot about contrast in these videos. We have to know contrast, right? We have to know dark before we can know light. We have to know um, up before we can know down. So when you're feeling self-pity, that is your higher self giving you the opportunity to say, okay, now you know what this feels like. Wouldn't you prefer to feel the opposite? But then no judgment. Because if you need to sit where you are in that self-pity mode, no judgment. Remember, no judgment. Be where you are. Because wherever you are, that's exactly what you're being given the opportunity to take a look at, to embrace, to let go, or to create more of. Now, there are three questions you can ask yourself. What feeling or belief can I let go of right now? What feeling or belief will I let go of right now? And what feeling or belief do I need to hold on to for just a little bit longer? And however you answer those questions, no judgment. Because remember, wherever you are, love yourself to be in the moment. To really embrace who you are and the gift that you are. If you have any questions with this and you'd like more help, I invite you to check out MasteringYourBeliefs.com because you know, this work is so important. Inner work is the, the, oh my gosh, the most rewarding work you will ever do. Pay attention to what you're reading. Pay attention to what calls to you on the site. And if you have any questions, remember, ask your sensei. In the meantime, this is Nancy Muller, the one and only Life Sensei. Say ciao for now.